it's more high tech, it's more modern. I forgot something. A little bump here to test the suspension. No problem. BMW M5 competition. Yeah, it's all fake sound. What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we've got the all new 2021 BMW M5 competition. So this is the facelift, the LCI, life cycle impulse. And well, not that much has been done specifically to the M5, but today I'm going to show you what it looks like with all the new goodies on the outside and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to receive updates when we upload a new video. And check us out on Instagram if you like, at Autotop.nl. Alrighty, so let's start at the front, obviously, because this is the biggest change to the 5 Series and to the M5. You can see that we've got the new headlight design. Now, the previous one, F90, pre-facelift had, it, it was sort of a modern take on the angel eyes still. It was a little bit more angular, but it was rounded compared to these new L-shaped daytime running lights. It's more high tech, it's more modern, but I don't think I really like the fact that they have completely ditched that angel eye design and uh, well, the, the history of that headlight. We also have the BMW laser light, so you get that blue accent. And for the first time uh, on this LCI, you can also get the shadow line headlights, which means that all this stuff in here is blacked out. And that of course means that the LEDs and the blue of yeah that pops a little bit more than usual uh, we also have a new lower apron design so this is a bit more angular as well a bit more yeah well again less rounded like the headlights uh, the headlights themselves are a bit more aggressive as well we've got a new grille design which is a little bit more upright and it also stretches out into the bumper a little bit more but I do like the new front. I think it looks good. We've got regular competition wheels with optional carbon ceramic brakes behind that. Uh, that means of course that we get the golden brake calipers. Now you have three types of brakes on the M5. You have the standard ones, which means that you can get a red or a blue caliper. You have the M compound brakes, which means that the calipers can be black or high gloss red and the carbon ceramics with the golden calipers, of course. Uh, these are the ones to have. This is such, such a good brake. It's incredible how many times you can go from 300 to 100 and, and the brakes just feel so, so good. Uh, yeah, it is a must have on a car this fast. Beautiful 20 inch wheels. Uh, this has been changed a bit as well for the facelift. So this is all a little bit more black compared to the pre-facelift. Other than that, on the side, no changes. At the rear, we've got the new tail light design. Again, with that black surround. And uh, we showed you this in the new 5 Series introduction video. That this is all, yeah, basically like 3D. So you can touch this. Well, you can also touch a pre-facelift light, of course. But I mean that you can feel the structure. There's no cover uh, over that. So I do like that. Uh, exhaust, the tailpipes are a little bit thinner and they are high gloss black. Diffuser is basically the same. They say it's different, but it's not really. It's very, very slight change. I forgot about this. This is new BMW M5 competition, new black badge uh, in the grill. That used to be a chrome M5 badge. Under here, same thing, S63 4.4 liter V8 by turbo with 600 horsepower or 625 horsepower if you go for the competition. Both have 750 newton meters. This has the optional carbon fiber cover, but nothing has been done to the engine with this facelift. Uh, it's just, I forgot something. What about this color? Brands Hatch Gray is a new color. Ah, now you can see the, uh, the tail lights are completely on now. That looks a lot better than before. 
Brands Hatch Grey. This is a new color for this model year, so the for the facelift. And I do think it looks really, really nice on this car. It's a beautiful spec. There is some uh, depth in that color when the sun hits it. There's also a new red and a new blue, but I like this. Especially in combination with this brown leather, Aragon Brown is the color. I thought it was Tartufo, but it's not. Aragon Brown. Remember that, because this is a really good spec with that Brands Hatch Grey, the carbon fiber on the interior, beautiful Bowers and Wilkins. And on the inside, we've got a new 12.3 inch screen display, bigger than before. And that's basically it. I mean, there are a few little changes here and there, but the biggest thing is that front end, uh, the tail lights, uh, a couple of colors, and uh, for the M5 competition, they have also taken the dampers from the M8 Grand Coupe, apparently. So they have learned from the development of that car and they have adopted those dampers from the M8. So this car has new dampers. I think that's it. We've got some new buttons down here. Uh, we've got setup and M mode instead of all the different switches you could use to set up everything. So you had like an engine and a, a suspension button. Now you have setup, you hit that and you get your menu uh, like you get in the M8 and you've got M mode down there for the ugly speedometer, which we don't want, but we're going to use now until we go to the Autobahn. But to be honest, uh, the first M5 F90 had the best speedometer, just two round digital ones with a nice design. Then came an update, which was worse. And now we have another update, which makes it even worse still. Anyway, let's take it for a drive, set up. We are in comfort, all comfort mode. We're going to go for M2, which is four wheel drive sport and everything in full attack mode. Or maybe let's start in M1 because that's two wheel drive mode. So two wheel drive mode means that we have 625 horses on the rear wheels. With Pirelli P0's on a cold day means that you have very, very little grip. The car slides around all the time and it is, well, it is a lot of fun. It is still, you know, one of the best setup sports sedans out there. The directness is really good. The stiffness of the suspension also really helps because that makes it very controllable. I do still really like the fact that BMW pulled apart the M5 and the M5 competition. The competition is really, really stiff. It's really hard. For your everyday driving, you have to really test drive this car in your area to see if you think it is okay. Because I can imagine that if the roads are not that great uh, in your area, that a competition is going to be really, really stiff and hard and well, pretty much unbearable. An M5 though is seriously comfortable. I know that was my initial problem with it that I thought it was too soft but after driving the competition it all you know fell into place and it does really make sense now okay so we've switched to M2 now that means that we have four-wheel drive sport still everything in attack mode apart from the suspension so this is basically our Autobahn setup sound check yeah virtually absent I mean it's almost impressive how quiet they have been able to get this V8. <laughs> There's hardly any sound. Uh, you have a little bit of a deep, low burble in the lower part of the rev range. Yes, I know. But once you get going, yeah, it's all fake sound through the speakers. And the engine is so quiet. It's really weird. It's even more quiet than uh, when it came out. I mean, you have OPFs now, so the sound has gotten worse. And it seems like that with this facelift, the sound is even less than before. I don't know, that might be just in my head, but it feels like that. Alrighty. Autobahn, speedo cam. It 
does still really feel so powerful. The M5 is such a such a good car. And this drivetrain is so impressive. Here we go. Full throttle. As I said, we've got the suspension in comfort mode to deal with the little bumps we have here and there. Other than that, everything is in its most sporty setting. Now, we have of course also done some measurements from 100 to 200. We measured a 7.16, which is very quick. Weirdly though, it's not as quick as the pre-face lift. M5 we had, which did a 6.7, so it's quite a big difference as well. It's it's pretty weird, but uh, we do know that these M5s they have been dynoed all over the world, and we know that a lot of them generate a lot more horsepower than BMW says. So uh, 670, 680 is no exception. So it could be that that previous one we had. Uh, delivered like 670 or 680 horsepower and this a little bit less. I don't know. It's pretty weird because it's quite a big difference It's still mega fast though. I mean, I'm not complaining So here we go Oh, it's so nice and torquey And again, you know that sound most of it is fake. Little bump here to test the suspension. No problem. And this is, you know, why this M5 is so good. The ease with which it just walks, strides to 310 kilometers an hour, the way you can brake, yeah, it, it, it just has everything you want from a car like this, and that hasn't changed with this facelift, apart from the sound maybe, but of course there are very simple solutions to that, so, in short, the facelift, I do like the front end, I think it looks even better than before, but the M5 is largely unchanged. But that's no embarrassment because it's still freaking awesome. Okay, I'm going to end it here guys. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right there. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one. Bye.